grilled tequila chicken tacos with a fresh corn and avocado salsa. This is super easy. It's a weeknight meal. And guess what? It's what you're gonna have for dinner. So let's put some food on the table and make it. To start, we want to marinate chicken. Now I'm using chicken breasts because again, they're easy to have. You can keep them on hand in your freezer. And to me, they're that weeknight staple when you don't know what to have. You pull out the chicken breast, you can let it thaw in the fridge all day and then you're ready to make dinner. So to make this, and we're using, like I said, it's a tequila marinade. And what that really does is the tequila has a unique flavor. It's not for the alcohol content. It's actually a unique marinade that will impart a little bit of flavor and really work well with the citrus and actually help tenderize the chicken a little bit. So what we're gonna do is use a yellow or gold tequila. So that to me has a little bit more flavor that imparts on the chicken and that's kind of what you want. So we're gonna put that right in and then we're gonna just kind of spice it up with a few things. So I wanna use some citrus. To me, that's super important and one of my favorite things. Now, when I'm gonna do citrus, I like to make sure it's at room temperature at least and I wanna just be able to juice it. So when it's at room temperature, then it will actually exude more juice. Now, if I would need to, I could heat it up in the microwave a little bit. That actually sometimes can help it get a little bit more juice too. So what we're gonna do is just juice these right into this tequila and all that citrus, look how it comes right out. Now what citrus does, it does tend to tenderize and it can actually end up sometimes almost slightly cooking something because it has that acidity to it. So we're gonna let this marinate at most six hours. It can be up, you know, if you wanna get overnight, you can, but that's where it gets a little bit tricky and I think sometimes it can tend to make the chicken almost mushy. So I like to go six hours at the most and as little as two hours. So you have like a nice range there where you can actually, you know, let it sit for a little bit. So I'm gonna put in now the orange. So the orange offsets that lime. The orange has a little bit more sweetness. It kind of tempers it out and right in there we're juicing it all. And now we can talk about the garlic. So to me, garlic, essential. In the marinade, you actually want that flavor. You want that strength of the astringent pungency of a garlic because it takes quite a bit. You know, a marinade on its own doesn't always just impart a ton of flavor. So you need strong flavors to really work in that. So I'm gonna press the garlic in. Now when we press garlic, see all those pieces that go in? When we press it into something, it releases the most, it breaks all the garlic pretty much into like this paste. And what that does is kind of release the most strong garlic flavor you can, which is what we want for marinade. So if you just like leave garlic whole, that's like the least amount of garlic because it will just slightly lightly flavor something. But when you press it in like this, you're breaking all that down and you're actually getting that flavor in there, which is what I want. So we're going to press this last one in here. It can be a little bit messy, but you can see it all floating in there. And then we'll just make sure to get it right off of there into there. And now we wanna make sure we have some seasonings. So salt, super important when it comes to meat. Salt is what actually will help season the meat, help it retain its moisture, not get dry. We're also gonna put in some chili powder. Chili powder has a blend of spices. It has some cumin, it has some chili, but what it does is it has that beautiful warming effect. And I think it has just like that unique flavor that needs to go with those Southwestern taco style flavors. And then we're gonna up the cumin a little bit more with some cumin, because I just love the warming spice that a cumin can have. It's just so good. So what I'm gonna do is just whisk that together. Just a simple, quick whisk, just to make sure it's somewhat incorporated. And then we're gonna take our chicken breast that I've thawed here, and we're just gonna put them right in. So this, I wanna make sure they're somewhat covered. If they don't get fully covered, you could do this also in a plastic bag with a zip top, but submerge them. Now, if you're not fully covering it because your vessel maybe is more shallow, turn them every so often. Make sure they're gonna be evenly coated. So I'm gonna wash my hands, I'm gonna cover this, and we'll put it in the fridge. These were in the refrigerator marinating for a few hours. Now I'm just gonna pop them in the grill, take the cover off, discard the marinade, and it usually takes about, you know, five to eight minutes per side, and so I flip them once during. But we are gonna put these on, get that good charbroil flavor. Flip them once, and soon they'll be done. After the chicken was done on both sides, I checked the temperature, took it off the grill, and I'm just gonna let it rest while we get a quick corn salsa ready. But you can see the chicken got nice and browned on both sides, but always check the temperature. That's how you know. And you always wanna let meat rest because it then reabsorbs its juices and they redistribute. Otherwise, if you cut it right when it's hot, you lose a lot of the juice. 
That's not good. So what we're gonna do is do a really quick corn salsa, which I love a corn salsa. So to start, we're gonna use corn. So this is my home frozen corn that is thawed out. You can buy corn frozen, let it thaw. You could even char your corn if you want to like fresh sweet corn and use it. I just think, you know what, this is a weeknight meal. I wanna do something that's easy and I have corn in the freezer. That's what I'm gonna do. So I have that here. I'm also gonna add a can of fire roasted tomatoes and I drained most of their juice. You can see a little bit more collected and that's okay, but I drained as much as I could because I don't want a ton of extra liquid in this. I want it to be kind of a chunkier salsa. So I like to make sure I drain off as much as I can. So into that now, we're gonna put some red onion. Now, red onion, what I like about it is it has a sweetness to it. It has kind of that onion pungency, but it's a little bit more tempered than just like a yellow onion could be or something. And so that's why I like to use it. It has a little bit more of that in it and that's what I like. And it still gives you that nice color. It gives you some great flavor. And so that's why I use red. And you could also use scallion here, but I think the red has something special. So I'm gonna add that right in there. You can see right away, this is what? A very beautiful, colorful salsa. And it's just a take on a salsa, you know, with some different flavors. So then we're gonna take an avocado. You wanna make sure to have a ripe one. If you don't know when one is ripe, don't do this in the grocery store because this ruins it for the other people, but at home to know yours is ripe. That little stem when you take it off should be a nice light yellow green color underneath. Then you know it's a pretty good one. It's usually ripe. Now watch me cut this open. It's an awful one. Sometimes they trick you, but that's perfect. That's what I like to see. So we're gonna take out that pit and I'm just gonna in here, you have to be careful, but I'm gonna give it a nice little dice. That way it's just easier to me to do it in here sometimes than on the counter since I want it to be diced. You could go either way. You could kind of peel it and then do it that way. It's so whatever works for you and whatever your comfort level is. You know, in the kitchen, you have to go with your comfort level, what you feel comfortable with. Now I'm gonna grab a spoon because I wanna make sure that I can get out all this pulp and look at that. See when I'm pulling it out, it then is kind of already broken up, which is what I like. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put that in here. So we have this mixture of creaminess from the avocado, which avocado also has a good fat to it. So it has that nice richness to it too. So it's kind of a good play for a salsa. And now we need to add a little bit more acidity, a little bit of pop. So when you're thinking of salsas, they always are balanced with some type of acidity. So we're gonna add some lime juice. That's gonna give that fresh acidity. It will also counteract the oxidation that could happen to that avocado that wants to turn brown once you cut it open. So this will actually help it a little bit, keep its color. So we're gonna juice that right on. Then we're gonna add some apple cider vinegar, a little splash. And what that does again is we're balancing out the acidity, which is really important. We're gonna add some salt. Salt is your friend. And when you're cooking at home, if you cook at home most of the time, 90 some percent of the time, it's really hard to over salt because when we eat out and we eat processed foods, that's where we're getting all of our over salting from. So to this, I also need to add some cilantro. Now, if you don't like cilantro, obviously you're not gonna be able to add it. And I get that. You have to go with what you like. So some people have a gene that makes it taste like soap to them. Then don't use it. You can get, sometimes it's hard to find, but at certain ethnic markets or things, you can find culantro, which is a great herb to use. It has cilantro notes, but it's different. And people usually think cilantro tastes like soap. Don't think that about culantro. So now we're gonna add a little bit of cumin. Again, it's just like that play on a traditional salsa spice. We don't wanna overdo it, but just enough. And then a little bit of chipotle powder. So chipotle powder has a smokiness. It also has a little bit of spice. So you could add a jalapeno here as pepper. I like to add that chipotle because I like the smoky spice it gives. Now I'm just gonna stir this up and look instantly. Look at that. You get the colors. You wanna kinda of make sure that the avocado gets a little bit chopped up, which is what you want. I'm smelling all those notes, which by the way, smell amazing. I think this is best if it can, you know, just sit a few minutes, maybe even like 30 minutes, just to make sure all those flavors are getting married. But what I like to do is once I have this all stirred up, I like to taste it for seasoning. It's quality control is what it is, but it's also just so we can take a taste. This is chef's prerogative in the kitchen. Mmm, mmm, that's good. A little bit more salt. That's perfect. Ooh, and I get a little bit of that chipotle at the end. So now what I'm gonna do is clean up. We're gonna slice the chicken, get all of our taco ingredients ready, get everything on my mouth, and then we'll make some tacos. 
So I took the tortillas and I charred them. I just think it adds a little bit of interest, texture, flavor, because it actually toasts the corn a little bit. I do it on my gas stove. You don't have to do it. You can do it on the grill too, easy enough. I just like that. It also makes them a little bit more pliable. So I sliced up chicken, and now it's kind of just one of those make your own, you know? You can just take whatever you want. A little bit of lettuce, crunch, of course. Some of that chicken, look at that chicken. It's beautiful. It retains so much of those wonderful juices, the flavor. You of course wanna take, yeah, my favorite part's always the sauces and the salsas. <laughs> that's, that's me. And then some cotilla cheese, which is a Mexican style cheese that's a little bit more dry, but it has so much delicious flavor. A little bit of that, and I like to put sometimes some sliced radish on it. I think it can just add, you know, a little bit of freshness. Now, one thing I do think can be really good at the end too, if you wanna just add more flavor to your meat and give it a pop at the end, or on top of your taco, squeeze some lime over it. That adds some great flavor, a little bit of juice. So then we have our, our taco, and you can just, Mm. That's a big bite. Okay. Look at that. Like, I don't know what it is about taco, but wrapped up with all that goodness, with the grilled meat that has so much flavor, but also is grilled just right in the sense that it retains its juice. You need that in meat. It also has that charred broil flavor on it, which is really important. What I love about it is, it really is set off by this salsa. Sweetness of the corn, creaminess and richness of the avocado. The onion gives it a little bit of pungency, the acidity in it. It's great. I love it. There's just happiness right here. And what I love about it is, it's easy. You can do it on a weekend night. You can have it marinating. Grill it on a weekend if you want to too for a weekend meal. But you can use it all through the week in different ways, this chicken. If you don't want to have people over, leftovers, make great salads out of it tacos, whatever you want. So what I hope you do with this? Well, I hope you make a taco because that's the important part because tacos just give you happiness, right? But I hope you also share this video around because when you share them, everyone sees that if this guy can do it, anybody can do this. It's just putting food on the table and that's all we need to do in life sometimes is just enjoy good food on the table. Bring us, bring friends together and make some good food. Check my website, wiseguy.com for this recipe and all my other recipes, they're on there. Until next time. Make something good, enjoy it, make yourself happy. That's kind of the point.